Big Gab, episode 423 for Monday, April 1st, National Trombone Players Day 2024. <laughs> And welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here, back here in Durham, New Hampshire, after being in uh, Los Angeles for Podcast Movement. I am Dave Hamilton, as always. And today, I get to bring somebody back on the show. Matt Gibson was here back on episode 41 in our first year of uh, doing this. Yep. Uh, November 30th of 2015, episode 41. We had you on the show and you and I have stayed in touch, Matt, and we ran into each other at Podcast Movement last week, and we right. decided we needed to do this again. So, Matt, thank you for coming back on the show. Thanks for doing this with me, man. Dave, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, as always, I love being around musicians that are doing things as much as possible. It's like, you know, it's like swimming in that creative energy where you can just kind of like soak it all in and and kind of muse each other, you know, and, yes. and get inspired and, and get that get that uh art out into the world you know so it's true to I, I wanted to actually address something that i've heard from some listeners um and and, and this isn't about you matt but it's it's actually about the show and me uh a lot of you have said i miss when uh because paul kent le- left the the show at least he left his regular appearances on the show at the end of the year and one of the things paul and i would generally do in the episodes was talk about our recent gigs that's how we'd start the show and Many of you have noticed that there has been less of that lately. I wouldn't say there's been none of it, but there's certainly been less of it. And it's simply because I haven't been playing terribly many gigs lately. Bitter Pill is in a typical winter kind of hunker down while we've been we've been getting together, writing new material. We talked about that when Billy was on. Uh, I've played some gigs with Monkey Fist here and there that we have talked about uh, on the show. But uh but that's that's the reason we haven't been talking about gigs too much is because I haven't had too many gigs. And so we, they, they, it is still very much a part of the formula. Trust me on this. It'll it'll come back around. So, Matt, you the last time you were on, you talked a lot about um, you had you're, you're a uh, you kind of done things backwards. You uh, you've always been a fan of music. You, you've always been playing guitar, but you decided to build up your following first before starting to release music. And I know I'm oversimplifying a little, but you went and built a million followers online on Google+. Right. Plus. Yeah. How, yep. So You're making me sad, Dave. <laughs> you're, you're making me really sad. Well, yeah, let's talk about that. Why Why is this? What, what makes this so sad? Google deleted... The entire platform yeah so yeah. it's gone it's yep. gone forever <laughs> but you it's made connections forever. on this platform right i did i did and i and i'm and they're still benefiting me as a human being my businesses and my music so uh i definitely can't complain about it but i i can say that i have gained and lost a million followers so far in my career so I guess that's a good and that's bad impressive. Thing, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In a, in a span of of about what about well I mean we talked to you eight and a half years ago or so and oh so you had a million followers then well right, right. 2015 minus 2024 I'm doing the math like that's yeah that's eight and a half years uh, you're not supposed to do public math so that's why I let my computer do it for me but oh, it turns gosh. out turns out it was right. Uh, you had a million followers when you came on the show the last time, and and then obviously the day Google Plus got shut down, you, you no longer right. had them. D- did you like? Did you what? What? How has that impacted you since then? Like you've been able to maintain some of these connections. Were you able to move any of these followers to other platforms? Were you able to like expand, broaden? Mm. T- talk. Let's talk about that. Well, I always tell people Google is like the girlfriend that breaks up with you as soon as you say you like her. So, (laughs) you know, think of all the great Google products that they've sunsetted, you know, that people were in love with, you know? Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's kind of like, you know, as, as much as we like to surf the, um, as Gary V talks about, uh, undervalued attention, 
out there, right? Yes. And it's really, we're just kind of lab rats kind of temporarily enjoying the the fact that we're we're gaining some attention and and people that are interested in our art and our music and our businesses while we're out there but that rug can get pulled out from under you in about two seconds and it's a, from z, you know hero to zero <laughs> or yeah, zero it's to not, hero to zero <laughs> if right? it's not your platform you don't right. get to control when it ends that's right, right. So, you know, it was funny. I, I heard Gary Vee was talking about, uh, you know, what happens if TikTok gets shut down. Mm. And he's like, I go where the attention is. I don't care. Like, it, and really, that's kind of where I think I've ended up, you know? Yep. And, you know, after that, I started a show called Kingdom of Rock, uh, which was a I, podcast. I think you had that going when we... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was... I could see that it was getting ready to, like, go away right so it's like okay i gotta figure out what could i do that also is uh would help me on my next steps right sure so i kind of figured out okay here's how you get a bunch of attention well i wasn't ready for it i didn't have an album done i didn't have music recorded i didn't know what a producer was i i'm ashamed to admit that but it's true <laughs> yeah right i you know i thought i knew what a producer was but a producer is basically a coach that gets you to the finish line and so you don't have to do that yourself, which is hard to, it's like, it's like self-motivation, right? Yeah. I, I, I love working with the right producer in the studio. It, it, right. I mean, I, it, you know, I've, I've had actually had the pleasure to, for the most part, only work with, with great producers. I had kind of one who was, he wasn't terrible. He just wasn't as great as the rest. And it, right. it, it's, you're, you're right. Yeah. Thinking of them as a coach is a good way they're an objective ear semi-objective ear I, y right. you know they they have they they are not you right so they have their own biases their own ideas but if you like what they've done with other artists in the past you're probably going to like what they've done with what they do with your work but right. uh but it is a, a trust relationship for sure yeah right and so um when i first started the show I interviewed about maybe, I think it was 49 artists, you know, a variety of different skill levels, you know, people that already have Grammys and people that are just getting started, right? Yep. Because I wanted to kind of get a good uh, understanding of what I was getting trying to do. I'd, I'd done 20 years in the military and uh, about maybe three-fourths of the way in, I got the, uh, I got, I've unlocked the million follower thing. Yep. And got a bunch of endorsements and cool stuff and free stuff and you know I, opportunities uh i did a fundraiser with um uh, michael jackson's family oh wow um uh, raising some money for uh charity for uh, getting guitars in schools and things yep and then um uh i met a whole bunch of people uh that worked in news and i figured those would be good people to get to know for later whenever I wanted to talk about stuff, right? Yeah. And that's turned out to be really good, right? So I really, uh, while I was on, you know, active on Google+, Plus, going to Hangouts and talking to all these people, I was really strategic about it. And, and the people that I thought would be great to be part of my tribe, so to speak, I, I really tried hard to get into their Hangouts and, and meet them and see how I could serve their brands and help them have, you know, uh, improve their value and, and what have you. So, um, but yeah, so I guess the podcast was kind of the, the attempt to go to the next level. And then I, after talking to all those artists, I realized not very many of them knew how to make money. And I was getting out of the military. I had to convince my ex now that, uh, I was, you know, this was going to work. This was going to be and, gainful employment and, and, someday. And yep. the evidence that I had that it was going to work was not very good. <laughs> so I was kind of like not happy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right. So I, I had talked to Grant Cardone a few times, uh, you know, on the, you know, just when he was kind of coming up and everything. Yep. And I knew he knew how to make money. So I had a, had him on my show and we did an episode called, called, uh, why artists are starving. And, uh, Basically, the bottom line is I concluded that artists are starving because they try to attract money instead of collect it. And Grant was telling me, he said, you know, uh, kind of think about when somebody is 
uh, playing music on the street and they put a hat or a bucket there and they're, you know, they just hope that when you walk by, you're going to hear their music, experience it. And then just out of the love of your heart for the music, just put like, I don't know, a million dollars in there or something. Sure. Like what? Right. That's, yeah, that's, that's what everybody it, wants. It, no one else. Few other professions work that way. And and right. that's not the only way the music profession works, but it, it is a part of it. Right. Like, right. Right. Yep. And and I think it I think it's probably the one that most aligns with the ethics of most artists where they feel like asking for money or asking for, you know, help is dilutes their art somehow. And so basically, uh, here's an example. Um, I came up with this kind of illustration, like what's the difference between, or how do you um, measure what it takes to make a billion dollars? So if you make a timeline and this finger here for the people that aren't uh, watching. Yeah, most of the audience will be listening. So yeah, 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 that yeah. In mind, so, please. so if you're on a timeline and you're a point A and then you got a line in point B, right? Yeah. So what's in point B is billion, right? Point okay. A is broke, right? So what's in between A and B? A giant mountain of work that is going to take thousands and thousands and thousands of hours to get done tens of thousands maybe a hundred thousand hours who knows sure. how, how how many hours it takes to generate a billion dollars so you got to figure out how much of that pile of work you're going to do and right. you're going to get paid directly in proportion to how much of the work you did versus somebody else because if somebody else did the work they get to keep the money. And so all these artists are mad at the record labels for not paying them a bunch of money, but they did a lot of the work, right? right. Managers did a lot of the work. They did the business development. They called all the people and, and, and they, they called all the advertisers and said, Hey man, you got to sponsor this. It's good. You know, like if those people are doing it, they get to keep the money. So, uh, Grant Cardone was interviewing Kevin Hart on the uh, 10X Growth Con stage one year. And he asked Kevin, you know, hey, what do you make for a living? You know, how much did you make last year? Yeah. And he's like, well, everybody kind of gasped in horror, you know, that he would ask him that question, right? And uh, Kevin's like, well, obviously, Grant, I'm not going to tell you what I made last year. But I will tell you this. When I play an arena, I get 100% of the door because uh -huh. my people do 100% of the work. Ah. And so vendors merch people security all this stuff he's put together teams of people that can do the job so he doesn't have to hire that out and pay the rate that the the venue wants you to pay which is usually way way more than you should be paying for it well right? but, it, but but to okay. your point about the the pile of work between broken billion if you go to the venue and say yeah I, you guys hire the security and merch and all that stuff. The venue is also doing the work of hiring those people. But right. Kevin Hart chose to do that work himself, right? right? right. So that's why he's paying. It, it's not that he's paying. The, the people that are doing the work are probably getting paid the same as they would whether he contracted through the venue or did it himself. He's just bypassing the middleman there. That's right. That's right. And, you know... You got to ask yourself, a lot of people say, hey, I want to be a successful artist that makes, you know, six, seven figures a year and all this stuff, right? Sure. But you, you have to ask yourself if, if you wrote all of the tasks you would have to do in order to do that on a list, how excited would you be to wake up every morning and work on that list? What do you think of that? I, I think you're exactly right. I, I mean, you're talking to someone who has started, I, I don't know, I, I think I counted... 20 businesses 10, 15 businesses the other day when wow. my yeah 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 and some of them have failed spectacularly and the failures range from i put in all the work and never made money to right. i put in all the work and i got sued and nobody <laughs> ever made any money like these right. are disastrous some of them are disaster right. stories but there yeah. are a few of them that are wonderful successes 
right? But you put the work in. And, and, and the other thing is, on your path from broke to billion, th- th- there's no guarantee that if you put in all the work, you'll get to billion either. There is right. a guarantee that if you put in none of the work, you'll stay at broke. <laughs> right. right. Like, that's, that's the, the only, only guarantee. guarantee. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That is absolutely right. And, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I'm not even going to try because it's too hard and I'm probably not going to make it. Well, guess what else is hard? Not going after your dreams and feeling like a piece of garbage. Yep. That, that makes you feel pretty bad. And when you feel that way and your self-esteem, you know, it's kind of like parents and, you know, I, I'm a parent. I've, I've made this mistake, you know, many times and, you know, we love our kids. We want to, we want to help them out. But if you help a child too much, you rob them of their self-esteem because self-esteem comes from being successful at trying and doing things and succeeding at them or successful at failing and recovering and getting back up on the horse again. Yes. And so it, it sucks re- not just being able to bail your kids out, but right. like, I mean, it's good to be there for them if it really gets bad, but right, absolutely. when it's, when there's a difference between bad and tough and when the going right. gets tough, you be there, you support them like emotionally, you give them advice, all of those things, right. but you let them do the work. Right. And, and if they don't do the work, they experience the consequences of what happens when you don't do the work. But conversely, if they do the work, they also right. get to experience the consequences and they right. get to own the outcome either way. Right. right. And, right. and that's the value on both sides. I've been right. there. I've, I've been I've spent periods where I'm comfortable and lazy and, get, get, you know, guess what? Like nothing gets done and I don't feel all that good. And then I've like buckled down and done the work and you feel really good on the other side. So, yeah. Well, no, I had it, a- it's interesting. Like, I mean, we're talking about our kids here, but yeah. we're, we're also just talking about ourselves and that therefore means we're talking about all of us right? putting in the work and, and valuing all of the work. Like, like you know, you're, I love your timeline from broke to billion because there's all the work that needs to be done. And like you said, you get to pick which bits of work you're going to do and which you're going to farm out or delegate or, or whatever. And th- that slices up the pie. Have, have you heard any uh, Dan Martell stuff? Yet? Uh-uh. He, um, he built a tech startup. He, uh, he wrote a book. I can't remember the name of the book. Um, it, it escapes me right now, but he was talking about, how to figure out what's a priority for you as the entrepreneur in in your business. And so the idea is, all right, indiscriminately just write down every single task in your business on a piece of paper, just yep. brain dump it, right? Yep. And yep. what I like to do is I like to open up uh, a notepad or, or the note program on uh, my iPhone sure. and put it on dictate. So I can speak the words into there. And what I'll do is I'll just freestyle and I'll just brain dump everything I'm worried about into that file, airdrop it to the note program on my computer, the Apple program, yep. and and then uh, drop it, cut and paste it, drop it into chat GPT. And I'm like, prioritize this for me. Give me advice on which priorities are the highest. Ask me some questions. Like say like, hey, you're the smartest business development coach in the world. Tell me what I need to do with all these this information. Ask me more questions. And I'll tell you what, man, it'll help you unclog your, your brain and get things figured out. But what Dan does manually is once you get all of those uh, ideas on a piece of paper, you you look at two things. You look at how much money does this activity make for the company and how much do I enjoy doing it? So if it's like a $3 sign activity and it's an A prior, you know, I love doing yep. it. Don't give that to anyone. If you start a, a chain of bakeries and you love baking, don't hire yourself into an admin job in an office where you don't get a bake anymore. You, you see what I'm saying? I so, do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so like the the B priorities that are 
So uh, let's relate. Know. This is yeah, a show so for yeah. musicians. So let's yeah. let's relate this to to music because you've you've done this right. I mean, you yeah. you've recently released uh, a, a, my, a tune, my debut, yeah, your debut called Empty, which you talked yep. about on the show nine years ago was coming. It's out. <laughs> I, I, I listened I'm a to it. Late. This, I'm a little it's okay. Late, but hey. <laughs> it's it's great. It's uh, Crimson Symphony is the name of your band, your project. Yes. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. It, the the song's called Empty. You, uh, I assume you wrote the song. You played yes, the guitars I on it. I think you sang the lead vocals. Yep. 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 Okay. And uh, and it sounded like at least some of the instruments, maybe the drums were programmed. Um, is that right? No. Nope. Were no, they electronic? Were, were they triggered? Oh, they were live drums. No, oh, okay. Live drums. Yeah. So they were. They, we yeah, might they... have. We might have put some uh, treatments on them for um, you know change the heads out or something. Yep. You know. Yep. Yep. That it. I mean, it sounded great. Like I. I. I love the tune. It, it's got this, folks. You want to go listen because it's got this kind of like it's this heavy. Six eight kind of feel. It's it's a I, I, it's a great tune. Yeah, I, Gil yeah. Sharon played uh, those the studio drums for it. He's oh, uh, nice. Marilyn Manson, uh, Jerry Cantrell, and uh, Dillinger Escape Plan drummer, among many others. He's yeah, a yeah. LA session drummer too. Yeah, it's really talented guy. Wow, that's cool. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so it, like, let's relate this to one's music career, right? What are the yeah. things? using your you know building the task list brain dumping it all how what, like let's let's workshop this a little bit how, what you know what are the jobs that you want to do and you don't want to farm out as you're building this you know your music career or rein, reinventing your current music career well as my first production um scott wilson from saving able played bass on it and also produced the track with me co-produced because nice. he's produced quite a bit of uh music and uh i one thing that i learned is you know when you're i didn't realize i was the producer until the project was almost finished <laughs> yep that's the best way of putting it okay right? yep and and because of that, I was hoping, you know, look, if I could just snap my fingers and I had a whole bunch of cool people around me to like put, put, do my hair and like pick out clothes, cool clothes for me and tell me, Hey, I just got an interview at six today and you got to go into the studio, whatever, dude, I would love that. But when you're doing it all by yourself and you're managing people kind of like from a contractor perspective. Yeah. It's and they're not necessarily part of your team, although they want to be there, but they're still kind of don't know what to do until you tell them. Yes. Like like it took me about 3 quarters of the project to finally stand up and say this is my song. This is I put everything into this and this is how we're going to do it. And and so I had to kind of learn that cuz even though I knew what to do, Yep. I didn't I didn't know how to do it in that situation with the dynamics of the different people involved and everything. So, um, uh, how would you approach yeah. it differently next time? Knowing, knowing what you know about this? Uh, I would have everything, uh, pre-planned out in a one sheet on how we're going to do it. In fact, um, recently I got asked to, uh, be part of a soundtrack coming up that I can't tell you the, well, I already told you secretly, but I can't tell publicly, you know, I don't know anything. That's where that's headed yeah but um they gave me a, a a one sheet that was like had all the details of the project what the ask was when it was going to be due by you know who's going to be involved with the project and etc cetera, etc cetera. and so i really uh i didn't do that i just kind of was winging it as i brought a new person into the project i just kind of winged it yeah just to see what was going to happen but i found well, there's a lot of not... value in being the you know the worker bee before or even alongside being the employer or the the the, the manager right? right because being the worker bee on this other project you get to see how someone else manages it and it might be that this person's doing it the way most people do it or they might just be doing it their own way and no one else does it this way but it doesn't really matter you get to experience it and say, oh, as the as the worker bee on this project, I like being treated this way. I don't like being treated that way. 
And right. then when you're in the management seat running the ship, you you get to decide how you're going to treat the, the the folks, you know, in this scenario, how the musicians that are coming in, how they're going to exp- what you get to define what their experience is going to be like to a great degree. I mean, they, they get to create their own experience, too. But like you set the framework for that. And I right. think there's a lot of value. And it's the same as. You know, go be a, a a side man in a band before you start a band and you'll and go be a side man in five bands before you start a right. band. Right. You know, and l- learn, you know, when you get home and you're complaining to your family, or your, your friends or whatever, like, oh, man, this guy that runs this band, I can't take it. You know, take note of why you can't take it. Right. And, and don't do that. Right. When you're one right. in the band, like, right. you know. But because it's so easy, I know this sounds so obvious, but it's so easy for us to just replicate what we've experienced as opposed to creating what we would have wanted. Because right, right? It, it's right. really easy to to, to be and, like, well, that's how it was. I dealt with it, man. You deal with it. It's like, well, do they have to? I mean, there's some things people just got to deal with. Like, it's just how it is. But ask that question. Is this just how it is? Or can it be different here? And then you really create a good working environment. People want to work with you. And then maybe you you evolve from a, you know, a leader with musicians to a band where everybody has an equal say because you're, you know, you, you if, if that's what you're looking for, because you can bring that in and develop that trust. I think that's really important. I, yeah. I will say that I kind of thought that because I had spoken with so many musicians that had already done this, that I could skip over that a little bit. And, and, I'm and how'd that, that work out? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm finding that I was mistaken about that. <laughs> you have to do the hands-on at least once, at least once. Yes. For everything in your business as a musician. I mean, if, it would be and, nice to. It, like, we don't always get that luxury. Right. It, but if you can, it's going to be valuable. Yeah. For example, let's say, you know, you're like, oh, man, if you just run Facebook ads, you're going to get lots of whatever. Right. Well, and you, you were to, doing try, Facebook ads nine years ago. You were rocking. Yeah. With it. Yeah. Well, try to try to spend a thousand dollars in Facebook ads and not feel like you wasted your money at the end of that thousand dollars and and see how you do. Because this is a very different story than you told us nine years ago about Facebook ads. And I realize they have evolved since then because nine years ago, people were against spending money on Facebook. So it was easy pickings right. to buy Facebook back ads then, back you then. Could make right. a killing back then. But Correct. now the, yeah, it's almost different. like you have to be a Facebook ad scientist, <laughs> you know, to like figure out how to, to beat everyone else. Because it's well, it's, 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 and you it's can spend wars. you can spend some of that billion on the expert to do right. your Facebook ads for you, right? right? And, and and that's okay because that's going to give you a greater chance at getting to that billion. But you definitely have to know why you're doing it. I a lot of stuff that I was doing in the beginning, I was just doing to see like what would happen if I do it. Yeah, it wasn't I wasn't thinking like a businessman, you know, I was like I was thinking like somebody that was trying to understand all the parameters of the space they were in. And now I'm more like, man, I'm going to hire that guy in five minutes, even if it's on five or hire like five people at a time and just like put them against each other. You know, there's all kinds of ways you can do it to, like, get the results that you want. Because one thing I found in PR and marketing, 80 to 90 percent of the people you talk to are completely full of crap. Yep. In my opinion. I don't no, know, dude, you're, what, you're not you wrong. Think? No, I, yeah. I agree with you. I, we've been, you know, with all the businesses we've run, including the, the bands that we've had and have, we've hired some social media experts, some SEO experts. And some of them, maybe to your point, 20% of them actually have provided value and the rest it's, 
at best snake oil. But I don't. Right. Like, the thing is, I'm usually pretty good at sussing out people who are trying to, who are just running a scam and know they're running a scam. Right. Right. Like I, I'm usually not always. And I've been fooled and I will be fooled again. I know. However, most of the people of that 80 percent are people that themselves believe they have value to add and that they have a system that works and they know what they can do. And it probably comes from having had some success with something related in the past. It turns out sometimes that success can be dumb luck. And then they right. sell their dumb right. luck with confidence, right? Strong right. and wrong. Right, uh, right. Uh, strong but it, and wrong. I love uh, it. But it works <laughs> right. in terms of convincing the buyer, a.k.a. me, like, okay, this person knows what they're doing. They seem legitimate. They seem like they're good people. Okay, great. I can work with them. I, but it like a lot of it is just like, well, you know, I, we hired when we had, uh, the Mac observer, we hired on the side and it was all like on the up and up the head of SEO for one of the major entertainment brands. This person worked right. full time for this, but was able to do SEO on the side so long as it didn't like compete with directly with th this entertainment group brand. And the good news is that, you know, the, the Mac observer does not compete with the, you know, the top eight right. entertainment brands in the, in the world. So it was like, okay, great. Like we'll, we'll, we'll hire you. And we thought, oh my God, like we have struck gold here. This is it. This person is in their position because guess what? When you're trying to do SEO for one of the eight major entertainment brands, Google already gives you kind of a leg up because right. people already trust millions and millions, tens of millions of people, perhaps a hundred million people already trust that brand when you walk in the door. So right. the little things you do work out great. And then you think I'm a genius and you believe right. it because it works. And then you try to do it with a brand that's maybe only trusted by, you know, a couple hundred thousand people, which is still a lot. And it doesn't really go anywhere. It's funny. I, I was speaking with uh, somebody that runs a podcast for a major, major uh, artist. And uh, they, they told me that they had gotten 10 million downloads for one episode. And the manager was screaming at them because they didn't get 20 million, you know? Huh. And I'm just thinking to myself, what are the actual marketing mechanics of of accomplishing that for even a major band you know like 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 it's it's like it's hard it's not easy it's like it's fishing it's like yes. fishing it it's like some days the fish are biting some days you're just in the wrong site some days you're fishing in a mud puddle you thought was a lake with fish in it you know like there's all kinds of, of different options out there but like you really can't control the you can't make the people do what they don't want to do and you can't make them go where they don't want to go yeah so like any type of marketing money you spend or pr money that you spend is risky no matter what oh, just by its very nature any type of money that you spend is risky that's why in business, they talk about risk management. What they're talking about is you have a budget to spend. It's the risk is the money and you get to decide where you're going to spend it. And hopefully you're able to earn more than you spent back. But you don't usually you don't spend it all in one place. You divvy it up because, you know, you're going to have some failures in there. So well, I and, and you got to do that with your band, too, like. When you're doing promotion with your band, you know you're going to have some failures. So don't – in fact, that most of the things you do are going to fail. That's okay. You just need a few successes. So what do you what do you think of somebody that's like, okay, man, I got $500, and this is a nail-biter, but I need to get some attention for my new single. And I'm just going to spend this $500, and it means so much to me because I, I worked really hard at the five and dime, you know – on the weekends part-time at the five and dime yeah, I know, for mr I know. mcgee yeah exactly so you got it good job good job <laughs> so you know it's like uh you know you 
where you're like attached to the outcome because that money is you're you're kind of broke. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so how do you how what do you do about that? Because like really you need no. To this just is a good little workshop let thing. It go, let it go. Right. But but well, but you can be you smart really, about it. You don't put. Okay. I mean, like let's workshop this together, right? Like you got five hundred bucks to spend. Okay, that's actually a pretty good budget. I would think to, to get one piece of music out there for people. And first of all, I think that's a really smart move doing one song at a time, trying to get people to listen to your record. That's different. Cause now you've given them too many choices, even if they come and it's like, here's my record. I've got, even if it's an EP, you know, where you got five songs on it or it's an LP where you get 10 songs, well, which one do I listen to? I don't know. Like give them, give me one, give me no choices. Right. I like, no options. I'm going to choose either to listen to this or not listen. And the first thing I hear is going to sell me. And then, then hopefully some su subset of people are interested. So, and then they, they seek out more. So the first thing you do is make sure that for the people that listen and like it. So you're already assuming some version of success, but the listening of it's in and of itself, isn't the conversion. That's the entryway. Have other things, have a broad amount of information that people can consume so that the folks, and it's going to be a subset of the people who listen, say, I like this. What else is there? And if you've only got one song, okay, what else? Did you write a blog post about how this song came together? Did you do a podcast interview about how it came I together? Did. I, well, I, that's doing, what, like, yeah, that's I what I'm saying is like, but link to all of those things. Yeah. Do, did you play some gigs? Yeah. If you did, put your set list on setlist.fm and link people to it so that they can look. Oh, I see. They play this. Oh, look, they play this cover. I'd wonder. I'd love to hear this band play this cover that I know, even though all the other originals that they have, I don't yet know, but I yeah. I like the one. So now there's two songs on the set list that I know. The one that mm -hmm. I just heard and, you know, some cover of like heard it through the grapevine or stuff. I don't know, whatever, you know. And and so have this rich amount of of places and things that they can consume once you give them the jumping off point because some people are going to want that once you have all that ready and you're you're ready to spend your 500 bucks and listen I, you you're never going to have all of that ready whatever right. you think you're going to want be ready with 15 percent of it get but right. give people something more than just yeah. the song you got to give them right. something else but it don't wait until you have well, everything don't wait till you have off, the record and just off the top of yeah, my go. head i can think of a few things number yep. one have a website right yep okay number two have a pixel of like facebook TikTok. you know anywhere that you can get a pixel right because then you can retarget your website visitors okay yep the, the, and, the and next, this is like the facebook pixel it we all yep. hate this thing because it it'll yep. it, it allows people to follow us around the web but right the, 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 i i will i will not chime in with opinions one way or the other on this advice and we're simply sharing it I, I'll, saying, I'll chime in later the, i'll chime in things, later yep. things that you could have ready right yep, yep. you could have your your it's song in a player with you could have all the links um like DistroKid, for example they they make a little landing page that can you could send people to for pre-sales when you first you know put the track in there that's who i used yep and um it, it was a it was a pretty good experience um, and that could be your website the distro distro kid landing page too yep, right it could like, be yep, yep if you want to if you want to keep it that way um but nowadays you can get managed web hosting where they'll give you a WordPress installation that really a, a, a junior high student could make a website out of if you, yep. you know, take the, you know, take the time to do it. They have plugins where you can automatically just put the pixel in there. You just got to cut and paste a few things. And then you have like um, uh, another thing, get their email, right? So, so you can, you can make little pop-up things on yes. WordPress that will get their email. I would say uh, that's the first thing you want to do because you want to own I, as much of the contact with your audience as you possibly right. can. You've paid to get them there and we'll get to where you're going to spend the 500 bucks in a minute. Yeah. But, but this is, yes, that set up that email form on your yep. website so that at the very least you can contact these people again. Cause that way, if, if you are 
you know, emotionally or politically against putting any kind of pixel on your website. Well, yep. you got to be able to find these people again and tell them, hey, I put out my second song. You don't want to pay yep. to do that the second time. You already and paid it, to get that person in your world. Capture Spot- them. Spotify does share um, email addresses with uh, yep. p- when when people allow it. When they opt it right? in. Yep, that's yeah, right. When they opt into it. So that's one way of right away. You might already have some of those. So you want to check and you can go to like MailChimp or uh, a Weber. There's a lot of different um, ma- mailing list programs Yep. Uh, where you can just kind of like automatically collect their email on your website. We've right. had a sponsor on the show. They aren't currently a sponsor, but we've had yeah. Ban Zoogle over the years and yeah. Ban Zoogle automates a lot of what we've just talked about. Right. For musicians, right? They've, yeah. So that's another way to go. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's there's all kinds of advantages. Uh, when you use a community like that, uh, you definitely get to talk to other artists and, and see what they're doing so you yep. can learn. Uh, it's always good to have community. But I will say this. It's hard to succeed when you're all in the same boat, right? So... It's good to be around people that are smarter than you and more talented than you and richer than you and better at business than you and better at marketing than you. So be careful about being stuck in an echo chamber if you do things like, you know, music industry related website providers or community providers or things like that. Yep. Because it can limit your thinking so that you don't go for the big fish like where like hey i'm gonna get like steve Vai to play on my record you know or or i'm gonna get i'm gonna go for a major label and i'm gonna try to get get the major label deal because of the here's the reasons why i want to do that now sure. i'm not gonna do that but maybe i would but, but somebody might want to yeah exactly yeah yeah right yep if it All if right. it works if it works yeah so we have this list of of things, and it could be more. There's more to this list, but yeah, we've got some basics on it. A, a place where the people that express interest in you can go and let you know they are interested in more from you. Like that's bare, right. bare bones. I would say that's. I would call that mandatory. If yep. there is other stuff on the internet already about you, your set lists, your other songs, you know, your whatever, link to that too, just to give them s- stuff to sink their teeth into because your song's only going to be, what you know, three to seven minutes long. That's it. You want to, you know, if they want to spend 30 minutes digging into you, That's you right. want to let them. But now, right. now we're ready for them to show up. Unfortunately, this field of dreams doesn't work that way. If you build it, they won't necessarily come. So how do we get them there? And Okay. Right. So we got 500 bucks. My thought is you spend slowly. Okay. I would spend 25 bucks on Facebook ads, 25 bucks on uh, like Twitter ads, maybe, you know, 25 bucks on TikTok ads. I would spend the first hundred bucks testing and seeing where performance is. Let the engines that exist, those engines at Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, the Instagram, they all exist to convince you that it is successful and to spend more money with them. So they will let you in slowly. They'll probably even give you like a little coupon that says, hey, you know, here's 20 bucks for free because they know that if you do it right and they want to help you do it right, good chance that you're going to see success. And then you're going to say, oh, well, I got a hundred bucks. I want to spend that here, you know? And so I would start testing and, and you can start small, figure out target as target as tightly as you can. Right. Like that, that would be my advice is don't try to go, well, I think my song is applicable to everyone. No. What is your song? And this advice actually comes from you nine years ago. What does your song sound like? What bands does this remind you or other people you've played it of? And then go target the fans of those bands specifically and get right. out there and you can do that with a little bit of money on Facebook and you'll see, Oh, okay. Well, you know, like for your tune, you know, I would start picking some metal bands, you know, but, but I would pick like, uh, what's that band? King's X. 
right? Like yep. that kind of reminded me of this because you have those yep. like strong harmonies mm-hmm. and 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 even acapella stuff happening. And there was a moment where I was like, oh, I remember that band King's S. There's probably yeah. still some. Fa- I don't know if that band still plays. I mean, they were big in the nineties. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. they do. Okay, well, they great. Do. Even if they didn't, you could still find a Facebook community where people are talking about them. Target right. that community. Send some ads right. to the people that are members of that. And they might, th- that's where you're going to start to really get some of this. And then hopefully some of them, when you get there, start to really kind of share it. They like it. And then they share it on their own. And that's when you really start to get the amplification. But that's how so, I would do this. Okay. So here's more of a boots on the ground version of that. Brilliant. Just as, yeah. As yeah a, my my thing. version isn't necessarily right. In fact, it's almost certainly wrong. So yes, this is, it's no, not definitive I mean, by any stretch. It's. <laughs> It's it's like again it's like fishing. Some days they hit on the spinner, some day they hit on the night crawler, some day they hit on <laughs> like you don't know. You don't know. You just got to try some stuff, right? Yeah, but so, don't spend all your budget right up front. No. Would be my learn. advice. Yeah, learn. learn Use right? it to you know that the first half of what you spend is tuition. You are paying right. to learn. That's it. Yes. And and nobody wants to hear that. Nobody I, wants to spend five hundred dollars to learn something. I know, but, but unless they realize that that's really what they need, right? I, I call all yeah. of my mistakes tuition, and it it, right. it helps me justify paying for them. But it, it also it's a good mindset to have. Like, oh, I, I you do need to pay for things. You know, it's like people say, "Well, I don't want to go to college." I mean, I didn't finish college either. I'm, I'm with you, but some for some people, college is great. Like, I have I have no issues with college. It just didn't work out for me, uh, at least not at the time. But the value of paying to learn things is awesome, especially when it can be experiential learning, which is exactly what we're talking about here. You put, you pay some money, you experiment with a Facebook ad or a whatever ad and see what happens. All right. So here's another one. Here's All another right, way to spend yep. that 500 bucks. Yep. All right. So I'm in Las Vegas, right? Yep. So my idea is take $500, go to a, a temp agency, and hire a actor or an actress, somebody that uh, is enthusiastic and could be your uh, sidekick to go down to Fremont Street with <sighs> your TikTok brilliant. phone yep. and take headphones and your track or a speaker and, and your track and go down there and just and wear all your swag, look like a rock star, bring this, you know, well together person with you that's your camera person and also kind of maybe has a personality. Sure. And then just start letting people hear your music and get live reactions and just blow your TikTok up that way. Or you could do it uh, with any of the different platforms. You get a ton of content, then you've got all this great stuff to load in there. And, you know, after you could even tie it with something you're trying to sell Yep. at the same time. So like you could be wearing like a beanie that has your logo on it and everyone's, and what you can do is you could give a free one to the people that give you feedback on your, your song. Right. Yeah. And, and then, uh, but you could offer it for sale on the video in your store. Oh, and you, just, you just set it up in Shopify where you've already got it set up, you know, like in Spotify, you can have merch items if you use the Shopify store. Yep. So you can, so preload all that stuff into Shopify and then just use the video to send people there. And now guess what? You don't, you just spent $500 and you got like a thousand dollars because you just sold a whole bunch of merch because you're, you're smart about it. Now you take that money and you go do the thing that you were saying. Now you got a thousand dollars to play with, right? Ooh. So you just keep rolling it over and then yep. go do that some more. And then you go send teams out. So you hire like five people from some college campus or whatever to go out and get you uh, testimonials of your music for a beanie on Fremont Street. And if you're in a major city, you can go do that. But as Bob Hope says, I go where the eyeballs are. So wherever the people are, that's where you go. So you can do it in, in the real world just as you can in the digital world. A lot of yeah. people forget that. No, you you're, you're totally right. And, and, and your idea sort of blends the two yeah. with the things that they're good at. 
That, right. this, I love this. And you touched on an element that is so important. And that is the word that revolutionized the shampoo industry, right? Okay. Doubled their revenues. You know what that word is? Dandruff. Repeat. Wash, rinse, oh, repeat. Oh, yeah, right. Double the, the revenues. The one word doubles the revenues of the shampoo industry. But right. you can, you're, when you said, look, you go do this and then do it again, but a little bit bigger because you have a, a slightly right. larger budget. Mr. And, it's the Mr. Beast model. Yes. It's the Mr. Beast model. Start, just start making content and then improve your stuff each time as you go, right? Yep, but just keep doing it. Like even if yeah. it's not improving. Like, I mean, yeah, right. Just yeah. just because if if what you go out and do works and you say, "Okay, great." Like even right. if you took my my version of it, right? Like go spend your 500 bucks, you figure out, "Okay, this is where I'm going to get people. Okay, Facebook's the right place. I know what my target should be because I've tried three yeah. different ones. I know, all right, this is where I'm going to now my remaining $250, I'm all in on plan B, whatever, you know, whatever plan B right. is, right? And it works, right? Let's say, you know, you did your homework, you were right, you, and then you proved yourself right. D don't stop. Don't rest on your laurels. Right. You just had people come. This is great. Right. Hopefully they bought your music. Hopefully that, you know, there's something, like you said, having something to sell. And you can set up a, a Shopify store with merch that you don't have to pay for, right? You're, oh, yeah. People, you Print, just design it. Use Printify. Yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll actually, you can do Printify without even using Shopify, right? Yep. Like it will link with it, store, but you yep. can use independently and you use Printify and you go design your shirts online and then link to the store and let people, you only spend money when people spend money with you. In fact, you don't ever spend money. They, you know, you set what you want your margins to be. They tell you what the cost of the shirt's going to be. And it's like, okay, well the shirt's going to be $14. Guess what? People are used to paying $40 for a t-shirt today. It seems right. crazy. I know we used to, us old people think that that's only what they charge at concerts. It is not. You can spend $40 for a t-shirt in every tourist trap on the face of the planet. So if you put your t-shirt up for $30 and your cost on it's 15, you don't have to sell too many to guess what? Have enough to go buy more Facebook ads or do right. more you know, in-person TikTok things or hire those college students or any of that. Well, wait, I need a vacation right after I did something cool, right? No, you take a vacation after you've had a loss. Nobody, <laughs> if you had a good morning in sales, don't take a lunch. Work That's through right. lunch. If you had a crappy right. morning in sales, enjoy a leisurely lunch. It ain't right. your day. <laughs> right, right, right. No. Yeah, but a lot of, a lot of people... Um, especially as they're kind of climbing the economic ladder, they they make mistakes by they get money and they take their earned income and they put it on something that's a depreciating asset or some type of thing that's not going to help their business grow, like, yep. you know, a sandwich or something, you know, like... A <laughs> sandwich is a I'll, depreciating I'll, asset. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, and so people, they just... If you can reinvest all your money in your business, it you know it's gonna fail. But uh, hang on a second, let me uh, mute this thing here. He's gonna mute his phone. Look at that. There he is. He's. Uh, oh, I guess he muted his microphone. That did. No, you're totally right. The reinvesting is the key. And what what I like to say is, that when you first start having success, live within the live the way you always have. Don't immediately increase your cost of living just because there's a little bit of money coming in, right? Like right. take that money and either invest it in your business or invest it in yourself and, and maybe do both if, you, if there's enough on the table to do that. And when I say invest in yourself, I mean, put it into savings, learn a new skill that's going to help you with your business. But buying a new car, that's, if you've got a car that works, guess what? A car that costs 10 times as much as that is going to do the same thing. It's going to work. That's it. Right. Might be more well, comfortable. But, yeah, yeah. But if I'm in a Lambo, doesn't doesn't that mean I'm going to be more of a rock star? It might. There might be a world where we're not buying, but leasing a Lambo for three to six months is actually worth your while, right? Because so, if you want to pro pro project an image, that could be it. But don't own a Lambo. Come on, that's crazy. 
You right. want to just lease it. Make make yourself seem bigger than you are. There, there, there's definitely part of that. But you don't need to like change the way you live. You can just create a persona for yourself. Well, you know what Grant Cardone talks about a lot, and I, I use Grant Cardone. He's I've just read so many of his books. It's sure. just like a, it's in my DNA, right? 10x. But uh, he says what you want to do is you want to make a a cash flowing asset. You want to build it, and then you spend off of the cash flow that it spits out. Yes. Not off of the if you it's like taking gas out of the car you know if you if you spend the money before it produces money you're taking gas out of the car and it's going to run out of gas eventually <laughs> i i have you done know? i can i can attest to this i've done it with businesses you build something you work really hard and it turns it into a cash cow this was the goal great amazing and you start siphoning off the cash well nobody likes to siphon gas out of their car but everybody likes to siphon cash out of their business it's it's right. like I, and and I am not immune to this, but you need to reinvest some portion of it. Come up, and it's way easier to decide what that's going to be before the money shows up. But that's on paper, yes. On yeah, decide on paper before there's yes. anything to actually do. But yeah, yeah, keep just if the machine works, keep working the machine, and it it will. It'll promote your band. It'll promote your music. I like. Yeah, I'm already I like there's things well, I need to do. <laughs> I I mean, if you want to if you want this thing's going to keep beeping, I'm going to get it. But I was going to say if you if as far as your um business goes, if you can keep your personal finances out of your business as much as possible for as long as possible, you're going to be way better off. Yes. Yeah. Some sometimes right. you don't have that choice. Sometimes you have to uh, you know, you, you gotta go and, and, um, sorry, I had to mute his mic for him. Uh, sometimes you need to take cash out of the business in order to support yourself. Right. Right. And, and that's okay, but take as little as you, as you need, uh, you know, as, as you're growing the business really, really kind of, fo and, and that I think, I mean, if there's, if there's a meta message here from this episode it's as musicians especially working musicians where there's money involved we are business owners we are entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and it's okay and important to think of ourselves that way our band is a a partnership if, if it is a partnership it might it might not be you might be an employee of a band and that's okay too but a band right. is a business just like any other business and you know all the stuff we talked about here we sort of danced in and out of the the applic the specific applications to music but all of the things we talked about whether they were specific to music or not are applicable when you're running a business uh, of your band and your band and your music career is a business so right you know, yeah. right yeah yeah and you know a lot of artists they're just one one gig that didn't pay him away from being like bankrupt and so what what would you say to somebody that is kind of stuck in the doing it just enough to make it mentality Ooh. financially that's a, There's tough, a lot of those guys that's a tough out there. thing i mean i feel like that that's gonna be a whole other hour-long conversation yeah but but Are, is this an hour episode i didn't it could be we, we we yeah, aim yeah. for about an hour yeah we're yeah, but yeah. it's fine like if we go a little well, over I, that's I okay too you, i want to ask you what you've been up to lately so oh all right I definitely yeah. want to well let me let's we'll, answer this we'll and then yeah. and then we'll yeah then yeah. i'll then we'll do that um yeah i, I would say find first put together a plan it, 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 take take an hour and put together a plan like right. you, you don't ne like in the scenario you described you don't have months to put together a plan right so yeah. take an after an hour take an afternoon take an evening don't watch that show on netflix you were going to watch and instead like it, your idea of just barf out all the things that mm -hmm. are stressing you right and and then feed it to chat gpt and have it prioritize the list for you. You're not Absolutely. necessarily going to agree with how it does it, but then you can edit from there. You don't. The, right. Nobody says that they, you. The only person that knows what ChatGPT said is you. Like That's you right. literally no one else. It wasn't even like you asked a friend that you have to say, "Hey, I didn't do it this way." ChatGPT doesn't care. Well, 
Well, you, you know, have like three friends. You've got Grok, you have Chat GPT, yeah. you've <laughs> got Bard. Exactly. You've got, you know, or Gemini or whatever, you yep. know, like there's no, all these different use LLMs the different out there. Yeah. Yep. Use it's the like different asking engines. different people. Yeah. It is. 100%. And none of them have a, a, at least as far as we know, none of them have an emotional stake in what you actually choose to do in the end. We may find in five years that we were very wrong about that and that the, the LL, <laughs> but at the moment, our current belief, and I'm going to go with it, is that you can ignore some or even all of the advice of the of the LLM and it's going to be okay. So right. I, I would I would come up with a plan that based on things we talked about here that you believe can level up the music game for you, right? Right. You're you're on this path where you've been repeating things that are not making you financially independent with your music, right? Your music right. is dependent on somebody else. You want it you don't want your music to be a dependent, just like you don't want your kids to be dependents once they leave the house. You don't even want them to be dependents when they're in the house, but you don't have a choice about that. Right. But uh you don't want your music to be a dependent. You want to be dependent on it. You want it to be prov- you want it to be a provider, not a dependent. Right. And so come up with a plan where you can realistically take what you know about how to play, who you know about who to play with, and take your music from dependent to provider. And that's right. Figure that plan out. And I love this idea. This is all just kind of coming to to us here, but but I like this idea of of the dependent pr- versus the provider. And figure out what it's going to take to get there. Re- realistically with what you know in that moment, you're going to learn more. It's going to get better. But yep. starting is the key. So come up with that and then figure out how long that's going to take or how many hours it's going to take you to get there and and then figure out, okay, great. I know what it takes to do this and I, I, I feel good about it. But in the interim, I still need to pay rent and I need to eat. So what am I going to do to feed myself while I'm doing this other thing? But the important part is, you figured out what you need to grow your music career. And now you're fitting this other thing, whatever it is, the cash machine in underneath that. So, you know, you still have time for the music thing. And by the way, if you think you're running out of time, just cancel your Netflix subscription. Take every evening and work on the music stuff. Even if you have to work full time during the day, doing something else, you've got plenty of time in the evening. Oh yeah, trust me. And, and this a is when businesses now. are built. And and you have a budget. So and you, you cancel, have a budget, right? If you cancel like three mm-hmm. or four, let's say four entertainment uh, subscriptions. Yep, you could have a hundred dollars right there. That's a hundred bucks a month, right there. A hundred dollars a month towards your dreams and your goals. Yep, and and and, put, and probably an extra 15 hours a week to spend working on those dreams and goals. <laughs> right, right. Okay, now, so the question is, it, let's just start with that. So if you're broke, I bet you you are do, spending money on entertainment and you shouldn't be, right? Yep. It's my guess, right? And I've been there and I do it sometimes. Okay? Oh, same. So I'm, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. guilty, right? It's same. same. But, yeah, this is, right. this is all very much easy to say. Yes. Right. So let's say we're going to cancel enough subscriptions to get $100 of, of, of leeway in there. And your goal should be, what can I do to 10x that $100 and turn it into 1000 in the least amount of time possible? That's and it. Here's the, here's the answer. This is what I do. I flip books. I flip antique books. What? I'm an antique, I'm an antique book dealer. And I just go to estate sales and uh, thrift stores maybe a few hours a day. And I go source and I look for, I'll take $100 in my pocket. And I'm like, how can I turn this into $1,000? And if I pick up something and I can make $100 on it, I buy it. If I can't make $100 on it, I leave it. Unless it's something I like or want to use, right? That I'm getting a good deal on. And so I just do that every day, Monday through Friday. And... I could probably make uh, one to five thousand dollars a month without trying, and uh, if I really wanted to bust my hump, I know people that are doing it and making twenty k a month. So and that'll create a budget for off. your music career. That's quite a budget, absolutely. And really, 
just finding undervalued things. Really, that be a scavenger. That's the best way of, of looking at it. Go find, you're doing it on social media already on TikTok. You're being a scavenger. That's where all the best undervalued free time is, right? Yes, so, <laughs> so by you, definition, yes. Right, by definition, that's where why you're there on TikTok. So you do the same thing with your money. Like, where can you find things? Go to the Craigslist free list. And like, is there, if you got a truck, what can, can you get a couch that doesn't have bed bugs, you know, and flip it. If you, you know, like do the people do like Ryan Panita, he's famous for the, the couch yep. flipping business, right? There's book flippers, there's record flippers. There's people that buy art. There's people that buy clothes that make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. Now they have people working for them. Sure. But, but really the reason I like flipping things is because anybody can do it. All you got to do is go to eBay or Amazon, find a category you want to learn about, sort it by the highest things that have sold recently, and just learn like, okay, this is what I should look for. And then you, you're you like, where could I go find a bunch of stuff that meets this requirement? And you just start, and you treat that like your job. You go to places, you look around, and soon you start making friends. And these friends start hooking you up, and oh, they buy stuff too. Well, they have music instruments. They don't play music, but I have books, and and they they uh, give things to antique dealers and antique malls. So I'll take the rare books that I have, or the rare whatever I have, or the cool records I have, and trade it for guitar stuff, free instruments, like all kinds of stuff. So it's like. If you're in a big city where there's a lot of people, man, can you make a lot of money flipping stuff. Now, people even do it with cars and houses, and eventually you want to flip items that is going to pay you big time. So if you flip a house and make 100 k that would be amazing, right? Yeah. That's your whole career. for You could fund your uh, residency in Vegas with that, right? <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So I so love this about idea. That's great. Getting, get your own pile of money. Get your own dragon pile of gold. So you can like go fund your own stuff and you don't have to kill yourself. I mean, it, it's, it's just like anything. It's, it's work, but find something you're, you enjoy looking for. And find you something know, you a, have, you have knowledge of too, right? Yeah. Like, right. yep. Yep. Pokemon car. Like you could have played and you're like, oh man, I know every single one of, them. okay, maybe you should go look at, you know, look into that, go look into grading cards and, and how do you get like the big money for it? You know, it's not hard. Love it. People do it every day. Love it. That well, Dave, is great. So, yeah. Well, what, what do you, I mean, we, I kind of feel a little selfish here. I, I'm, it says That's I'm okay. a co-host, but I, I pretty You're, much you are, you're our guest co-host myself. this week. Yeah. It's right, totally right, great. right. Yeah. But, but as a co-host, I want to know what the host is doing. What are you, uh, what are you up to lately, man? What's yeah. what the heck's been going on with, in the world of, uh, Dave. In the world of Dave, it, like I said, at the beginning of the show, musically, I haven't been playing a lot of gigs. I, um, I play, Currently, I play with three bands. Um, yeah. Bitter Pill is a band that I've played with for several years now. It's an original band, primarily. Of course, we play some some covers and traditionals and things like that. But, you know, we're, we produce our own music. We create our own music. We've released three records. Uh, it is a, we call it Haunted Rhythm and Bluegrass. So it's it's a fun band to be in. Everybody can play. Everybody knows how to perform most of us in the band have been in i think everybody in fact in the band has been involved in musical theater at different levels and so understands that live music is a visual art it is entertainment right and so getting on stage with bitter pill it, every time is such a pleasure because we enjoy each other yeah. the crowd it always enjoys us we know how to engage and and mm -hmm. and, and really dig in with the type of crowd that we wind up having and the songs are so much fun. It, like I said, it's, it's, you know, we go from playing really traditional bluegrass stuff to some bluesy stuff to some rock and roll. But our, <laughs> our bass player is, does not play bass. He was not really a bassist before he picked up the cello, which he plays to serve the role of the bass. It's still tuned like a cello, so it's tuned in fifths, right? Cello, a regular bass is tuned in fourths, right? Guitar is tuned in fourths. Mm -hmm. Cello is tuned in fifths. So 
he's playing that. He sings. His daughter also sings in the band, oh, and cool. she plays uke. So we get the the blood harmonies. There's three of us. Well, actually, everybody in the band sings, but primarily it's been three of us. And learning how to sing with them to prioritize like the 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 familial blood harmony blend that they have while still mm-hmm. kind of fleshing it out has been fun. But um, that's a great. It's a great band. We take the winter off from gigging to kind of you know learn new songs and and write and kind of be kind of more creative and less less um you know tied to a, a gigging schedule because once that happens it's hard to do other things with the band once you're playing right. gigs. So we've got a bunch of gigs coming up this summer but that band's kind of been uh gig wise asleep but otherwise very awake for a little while. I play in another original band called Fling that has been uh, schedule wise members of the band are, it is not a good fit these days so mm-hmm. it's tough for that us ha- that happens man. it happens right yeah, yeah life life happens around the band and and sometimes in lieu of the band and that that's we're getting together actually tonight to to jam and we we rehearse fairly semi irregularly but it's tough we've got like two gigs on the calendar this year and that's it um and then mm-hmm. i play in a an acoustic trio uh, that plays covers mostly like nineties. I, well, I would say nineties is our wheelhouse, but we play everything from like the sixties up through today, but it's three of us guitar. One guy plays guitar. Uh, my friend, John, uh, my friend, Jim plays guitar. John sings and sometimes plays guitar. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I play Cajon and sing harmonies all night. And I have this oh, nice. Cajon. I have this Cajon that I get to, it, I, I had them put, uh, it's a it's like a tabletop cajon, so it's pretty yeah. flat. And yeah. I I turn it on its side with and I put guitar pegs on it. Or they put guitar pegs on it for me. So guitar strap pegs, so I can stand and wear this cajon and play and sing. Oh, and, nice, dude. So it's a, that's musically that's that's what I do. And then occasionally, especially when I get like antsy and haven't played gigs for a little little while, I'll pick up a theater gig because um, I can read. And I like to rock out and I like to perform. And so I'll go like, I think I'm doing um, next month. I'm doing spring awakening, uh, oh, nice, which will be fun. You know, it's a rock and roll musical. It's like, it's actually, it, it's a great musical. I've done it before. So I want to, I want to put together a residency in Vegas. I want to play the spear. I want to oh, do, same. I want to do inside of that place, man, and make it like a super That'd be audio amazing. visual experience, you know, like, that would be uh I haven't even checked it out yet. I, I kind of feel ashamed, but my buddy I, was telling me that he was coming up soon, so I think we're going to go out there and I and, have uh, I I didn't see a band at the Sphere, but I went and saw when I was there in January, I saw they have a movie that shows when oh, there's yeah, yeah. no bands playing. That yeah. you like I recommend going to see that movie. Okay. It's probably the best demo of the the technology that you'll get uh, like okay, a, a band is going to be a different experience, but yeah. the movie is built to ensure every corner of that place is like used. And here's the thing. And I, I, I try to tell this to everybody who's going to go. It's, I mean, you get in there and even just before anything starts, it's this super disorienting thing. Cause you're in a building unlike anything you've ever been in before. Right. But once it starts and it really gets into you know using the whole screen. It's this immersive thing, and it's amazing. It's like IMAX, like it puts IMAX in a different category. It's it's like I'm. It's nothing you've ever experienced before, other than it approximates real life in moments where you're like, wait, what just happened? But the thing that it took the movie's about forty five minutes. We were probably thirty minutes in when I realized the best feature of the sphere is the one. You don't notice because of how well it works. And that is that the sound is perfectly tuned to give surround sound in perfect balance to every single seat. Yeah. And you don't notice it because it's perfect. And right. And it was like 30 minutes in where I was like, wait a minute. I'm in random seat number 107. Like, it, you know. Why is the sound perfect? And then I remembered, oh, yeah, they said that it was going to be perfect in every scene. <laughs> like, Dude, this was no, part of were, what they did. Or, yeah. or you were the only actual person in there and <laughs> everyone else was make-believe. Oh, that's true. Yeah. It might have just been Possible. me and my buddy Pete. That's right. And that's P- right. who knows? Pete might be a figment of my imagination, <laughs> right. too. Right, 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 right. <laughs> 
So nice. Um, so that's what I've been up to. Yeah, thanks for asking. I, I'm sure listeners out there are actually happy to hear that. So I, I appreciate you asking. Yeah. But we're at, we're at an hour 15. This might be the longest Gig Gab episode ever. Our, well, I, hopefully it was packed with some good practical tips. I there hope so. For everybody. And uh, neither of us are experts, but we're out there trying. And we're out there getting punched in the face. So yep. you got to you gotta be out there. You know, this is Sparta, baby. You know, That's right. That's right. Uh, All right. If you like what we said, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. If you don't like what we said, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. If you disagree with something and have something better to share, Matt, what's the address? Uh, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Giggabpodcast.com. That's Gig-gab- right podcast.com right? that's it that's right and speaking of you matt where can people find the esteemed matt gibson where can they find uh, your song i i will link to all of these things in the show notes at giggabpodcast.com yep. so no one has to remember anything well the simple answer is go to matt gibson.net m-a-t-t-g-i-b-s-o-n.net or you can go to crimson symphony at or dot com yep Cool. And Matt at CrimsonSymphonyMedia.com if you want to send me a little email and let's chat. All right. I will make sure all of those links are in the show notes. And oh, uh yeah, you know what? Way. I just realized I played the wrong theme music as this show started. Did you really? I, I, I really did, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't realize it. Um, but uh I played yeah, I played the theme music from the business brain show, which is interesting because we got into some business brain stuff. So, you know, it's fine. It's fine. No. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. But you know what's good. the most important part? What's that? What's that? You should always be performing. I agree with this. That's some good advice. All Thanks right. for hanging out with us, Matt. Thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. What a blast. I hope you enjoyed this, folks, as much as we did. And uh, I'll be back next week. Dave Cook from Area 52 Studios coming up. Always be performing, folks. We'll see you next time. And.